Day two of my Star Citizen experience started on the station I logged off at previously. And while we leave the station tab, I wanted to say a big thank you to all those welcoming me to the verse and offering help and advice. What a friendly and enthusiastic community Star Citizen has. I look forward to discussing the game more with you as we get deeper into it. Since the recording of the early videos, I have been informed in the comments of several performance enhancing steps to take, such as setting up a page file. And these changes now see me getting far better performance, thank you. Now, one thing I did do between the first two days was upgrade my pledge pack to include the Avenger Stalker. I already owned the starter pack from about a year ago, and I just couldn't run the game at the time on my hardware, and my initial play experience was satisfying enough that throwing in an extra couple of bucks for a ship with an interior was worth it for me. And on collecting that ship, I had another of those interesting moments when I entered the wrong elevated destination. It turns out there is a difference between pads, hangars and docking ports. After entering the correct destination though, I was on my way. And the view of the station above really gave a sense of scale. The Avenger Stalker can be entered via a ladder on the side of the canopy, but as any elite dangerous player wanting ship interiors would do, I would make my entrance to the ramp at the rear. The simple act of boarding a ship like this is really very nice, especially when the ship itself is so finely detailed and aesthetically pleasing. The Stalker was chosen over the Titan as it was listed as a combat variant to the Titan's transport variant, but I would actually recommend the Titan as it doesn't sacrifice cargo space for prisoner cells, as the prisoner cell mechanics have yet to be implemented. But nonetheless, the Stalker is a fine ship and I was very excited to take it for its first flight. Now, there would be some teething problems, as I was still not accustomed to the flight model and using mouse and keyboard for ship control, and lessons were learned quickly. Second time around, I would make sure to get clear of the station immediately after taking off. Landing complete. Launch complete. Landing gear. But after turning on cruise control in my ship, I came to the realization. That I could leave the pilot seat while the ship was in flight. Another relatively simple but amazingly immersive and useful mechanic. And well, wanting to go and see what the ship in motion was like from the ramp at the rear of the ship, I just had to push things a little too far. The ship was off thrusting into infinity, so I would respawn again, but I was learning. Interestingly, after claiming a replacement ship, I could see my previous ship still thrusting into space aimlessly. Not wanting it to cause any accidents, I decided, of course, that the most responsible thing to do was to blow it up.
Now, I wanted to go and take a look at the wreckage, so I'd attempt my first EVA. The wreckage did despawn, but I was really pleased with how simple and intuitive the transition between EVA and ship was. You just walk on out and float back in. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where my Armstrong moment video occurred. Presented here, though, with just a little bit more drama and style. From an elite commander's perspective, everything about this sequence is incredible. From the seamless descent with no glide phase, to the richly detailed and beautiful environment, the wind, the snow, the trees, to walking down that ramp and actually stepping off. It was quite a moment, I have to admit, and if I'm honest, it's the moment that really sold me on Star Citizen and what it promises. I had intended to log off here for a while, making use of the bed on board my ship, but did not fully understand the mechanics yet and thought lying down was all that was needed. There is in fact a special log off button when you are lying down I didn't know about, and so when logging back in I was aboard the station again. Star Citizen stations however are vast internal spaces with many different areas, from shopping locations and food courts to dingy back passages and cargo holds. Having decided I would most certainly be playing Star Citizen regularly now, it was time to begin buying up useful equipment like armour and weapons. Of course, this was also all new to me and they were a bewildering selection of very nice looking armour to buy. You can just walk right up to buy from the display model, but going to a terminal in the store is often more informative and easier to browse selection. As long time viewers of my channel will know I have a love of the colour purple and was able to find an admittedly gearish but definitely purple set of armour that I of course bought and equipped immediately. I mentioned my hardware in the previous video but I will add it here as well for quick reference. I have a Ryzen 3600 processor and GTX 1060 GPU with 16GB of RAM and the game is running off an NVMe SSD. I have also ordered another 16GB of RAM as this seems to be a big bottleneck for me. Again, I thank you for the recommendations for changes like setting up a page file or running the game in high to better distribute processing between the CPU and GPU, but these changes occurred after this video was recorded, and so I apologise for any stuttering you may see ahead. I also just want to give a quick reminder that if you have better hardware than I can afford, you will most likely see substantially better performance anyway should you try out the game yourself. I searched high and low, but this station did not have any weapon shops to buy from. 
and not wanting to return to New Babbage just yet, I decided to head for another major city, Lawville, on the planet Hurston. Maybe I could find a weapon seller there. This would be my first interplanetary trip, and I was getting relatively smooth quantum jumps in the preparation for the big jump, so I was hoping for a nice experience. Traveling between planets takes a little time, but not so long as to outstay its welcome. And during this interplanetary jump, I was again to be surprised by another little capability that coming from a leap seems amazing. That's right, you can get up and out of the pilot seat during a jump. I know this is probably something really basic to Star Citizen veterans, as I guess many of my observations may be, but coming at this from Elite, these little details are just mind-blowing. Now there isn't really anything to do on the adventure here, but on the larger and more varied ships I can see taking a break from the pilot seat during these jumps adding a lot to the experience. And again, I was treated to another stunning vista of Hurston upon arrival. I would even try catching a glimpse of it from the cargo bay. But while well, the ship was oriented in the wrong direction, and having learned my lesson about going out on the ramp, I decided against it. Next stop would be Lawville, but we'd need to make a few manoeuvres in order to get there. Quantum jump to Lowerville was a game freezer again, and so we rejoined in the atmosphere above the city. The aerodynamic effects here were really something to wrestle with. Lowerville was clearly experiencing a lot of wind tonight. When I got down to the hangar entrance, well, not being used to this, I decided to try entering sideways to maintain visibility, and it didn't go smoothly. But I did survive the impact, and was able to lower my ship down to the hangar floor. And with touching down and seeing the hangar doors close above, I had completed my first interplanetary trip in Star Citizen. With this already feeling like quite the adventure, I'd yet to even begin my search for a weapon seller in the city. None of that mattered right now though, as I made the journey through my ship to set foot on a planet I had never visited before.
found myself in Tisa Spaceport. And to give you an idea of what this facility is like, think airport. I would immediately make one interesting find right out of the arrival gates though. A spaceship dealership by the name of New Deal. Welcome to New Deal Shipyard. The finest purveyor of pre-owned vessels in all of Lord. Here is where ships and ground vehicles can be purchased in-game with the in-game currency. I did not have the wealth to make any purchases here yet though. So that would change a week later thanks to an incredibly generous gift from viewer Tony Fu. And I would like to thank you again Tony for your extremely generous transfer of credits. You'll certainly be seeing a few more ships as a result. So heading through customs and into Lowville itself. And if the new deal gave you the impression that Lowville was another technological utopia like New Babbage, it is not. Making my way to the mass transit system and boarding the train, there's definitely way more of an inner city vibe already, with more security and less decoration. Now arriving from Tisa Spaceport, stand by and let passengers disembark before boarding. Buildings pass by in the night, and the screech of this industrial looking train as it traverses a corner in the track. Lowville already has a lot of character, and I have yet to even set foot in the city. Now, there were quite a lot of micro freezes in this train ride towards the metro centre, but the performance on the train rides will actually increase over time in this session. Someone in the comments mentioned something about shader caching. And maybe that's what's going on here because I noticed a performance increase before I carried out any optimizations on my end. But nonetheless, the game is still running to a playable level, even at this point. I made my way through the metro center, a maze of connecting tunnels and platforms with trains running all over the city. But eventually, I would navigate my way through and find the exit into Lowville City Streets. See your local recruiter for details. Why not consider calling Lowville home? The industrial and utilitarian aesthetic of this city is like something from Blade Runner or Judge Dredd. Everything looking a little dirty and damaged, hope abandoned to apathy, in an accidental and gradual dystopia of neglect. Personally, this is a style I absolutely love, with some amazing views of the early morning skyline from a nearby opening. But I was not just here to sightsee, I was looking for somewhere to arm myself. And then a moment too soon, as the city certainly has the feel of somewhere you have to watch your back. And there were many examples of an amusing but common bug in which NPC characters stand atop tables and chairs. In my head's canon, this is like a future fad, like planking. Everyone is just quite enthusiastic about it is all. Having not found any purveyor of weapons in the current district, I decided to head to the business district. Maybe I would have more luck there. This journey would require two trains, so I'd need to make a changeover midway. On one of the journeys though, I encountered another player on the train. Another interesting bug presented itself in which both the other player and my HUD would phase in and out of view. I tried to ignore this by looking away from the other player, but they insisted on making themselves visible by sitting in a seat opposite me. Security was 
reserves the right to search travelers at any time. The other player and I would part ways at this stop, and whoever you were, it was fun to phase in and out of existence with you. With the sun now rising and performance increasing though, on this final train journey for the day, I would be able to get a glimpse of the true beauty of Lourville, passing by the train car as we travelled. So it turns out that the Central Station Business District is just that, a very Blade Runner-esque area with a stock trade floor and executive suites. I felt pretty out of place here and there was nothing I needed, so I opted to head back to rest. It had been a longer day than my first, but I was having one hell of an adventure getting to grips with the game. I would find weapons soon, however, and begin carrying out missions, something we will look at in the next video. I look forward to discussing Star Citizen with you in the comments, and thank you again for watching.